talk to retail people, you know, clients uh, on an average uh, daily basis, uh, with, just with regard to they just don't understand what it takes for a product. And so that's, I think that's, uh, as a community, everybody has to educate the rest of them. The other uh, challenge, I think, uh, the reason uh, when it comes to delivery and uh, logistical mechanisms for the ba uh, for the banks, they can't really make a product based for, let's say, the Toronto area or the Vancouver area. They have to look into it as how can we make it available to the rest of the com rest of the uh, rest of the country. I think often what I have seen over the years is there's all the emphasis that is laid on Islamic finance is based solely on the Toronto consumer market. Well, what if Toronto, and, and that's not a big enough, unfortunately, you, even though the demographics are majority of the Muslim population in uh, Canada is in Ontario, and a big chunk of that is probably in Toronto, but the reality is there's still a huge portion out uh, in Western Canada that nobody seems to really focus on. So uh, a lot of them, you know, the numbers may not make sense because all the numbers that are presented often in, are catered just uh, based on statistics from the Toronto area, whereas, you know, we have to look into the other part of Canada as well and see what's out there as well, and there might be opportunities to start whether provincially. I know on the credit union level, I, I, I'm, I'm resident in Saskatchewan, by the way, I know several of the credit unions that are following Central One's leads actually out uh, west and uh, looking for, uh, uh, you know, opportunities to fund these out in uh, Ontario, and, you know, if I wasn't there, basically, you know, they may not be aware of the opportunities. A lot of it is, you know, if you're getting out there, you know, uh, talk to people in Alberta, talk to people in BC, talk to people in Saskatchewan. There are credit unions out there that may be interested in either uh, funding these uh, products out for consumers at the, uh, the end users out in Ontario, or they might be interested in taking on a more of a retail role. Uh, but I think, I think the numbers uh, can, can be justified, but you have to get the entire country the other thing, uh, you know, on the on the investment side of things, what we see, which is I can speak mostly to that, and I think the 2.3 uh, billion, that's that's a fair number. I, you know, I think there have been a number of funds that have tried to uh, s start up in uh, Canada and haven't had uh, much success. What we see on the retail level, again, it goes back to the education level. We have some clients, and you know, unfortunately, they, they don't know enough about Muslims on a peer level are far less educated when it comes to investments. And when we talk to you know, clients and or people in the community, one of the most obvious questions we get is, well, you know, why do we need to invest? And so there's a lot of that attitude as well. They're just Because they have no education, they don't know what the benefits of investments are or aren't, they just choose not to invest. So we have literally clients that have millions of dollars sitting in their bank accounts just because they have no idea what to invest in, or they're just don't really care. And I think as a community, uh, whoever, wherever you go, respectively, we have to uh, do a job. It's our duty, I believe, to uh, educate uh, fellow community members to get them more involved in investing. And, and uh, the other, the other uh, thing, I think one of the biggest challenges, and, and I'll wrap this up here, is uh, what we see is accessibility to Sharia scholars. You know, people just, it's, it's very hard for people to get knowledge from uh, from uh, uh, or to, to basically get access to to a Sharia scholar, and I sorry I'm not pointing fingers at the, <laughs> the scholars in this individual room, but 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 that's generally the feedback we get. Uh, we we find it hard on being on an institutional side to get access to Sharia scholars. So we can only imagine what somebody at the retail level or an, a person out on the street may have to go through. So I think, uh, but I, but I also think there is information. A lot of the scholars do have websites. And the more we can help promote websites, the more we can educate people. And, and that's really uh, pretty much uh, sums up uh, my uh, Shapil. Thank you very much, Saad. Um, we're going to have about uh, five minutes for uh, questions. And um, if you could come up to the microphones um, and identify who you are and where you're from, that would be very much appreciated. Yes, Majid, if you could come up uh, to the microphone up here. My name is Majid Daoud. I'm CEO of Yassar Limited. Uh, I just want to address uh, Saad's concerns with terms of Sharia boards and requirements. Just give us a call. We, that's what we're here for, to provide that service. Thank you. Thank you. I think in each, each product, we'll have a fatwa associated with it, and that should give the retail customers a considerable comfort. 
Yeah, the, 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 the issue is not so much that there's a lack of rulings available, the issue is... Sorry, Tom, can you, uh, can you repeat yes, your comment? Yes, I was just re, you know, responding to, the, you know, to, to the, the accessibility of the Sharia scholars, and uh, I was just pointing out that each individual product should have, you know, will have a, a fatwa associated with it, and that should give the, the customers a, a great deal of comfort. I mean, maybe the point is that they, they don't even know where to begin as far as what product to look at, and, and, and but that, I don't think that's necessarily a, a Sharia scholar um, I, I, issue. I'm just I, I education. Think, I, I think uh, what, what I see, certainly, and my experience could be, uh, could be different, what I see uh, uh, is, it's not necessarily, it, well, there, there, certainly, there, yes, you're right, there is a, a lot of rulings available on the different uh, products, uh, product lines, whether you know, it's a Murabai, a Jara, or on the investment side. The issue is every Muslim or Muslims who actually are, they want to hear directly from the scholar. They think every one of them, their situation is unique. So there's a lack, they say, well, okay, maybe this ruling is applicable on a general sense, but it's really applicable to my individual scenario. And until you can get them access to those, you know, whether a scholar, until a scholar specifically replies to them saying, okay, it's okay to do this or it's okay to do that, which may or may not be feasible, uh, you know, because everybody has limited amount of resources. So, so that's the issue. It's not so much that there's a lack of rulings available, it's just people want to hear individually from the scholar. Yes, go you know, we've, yeah, and, and maybe. <laughs> sure, I was going to say that, you know, we've tried, uh, hard to <clears throat> educate our employees uh, so that they can answer all of the questions that the customers might have. You know, obviously if a uh, question is asked which is uh, uh, you know, obscure, uh, difficult, you know, we'll consult our Sharia advisors to uh, gain their expert input. But, uh, you know, <clears throat> one of the problems in this industry in the United States is uh, you know, being a Muslim in banking is uh, analogous in India to being, uh, uh, you know, a night uh, waist hauler. Uh, so there's no uh, tradition of Muslims in banking in the United States. So, you know, we've, we've had to train our own college graduates uh, from, from the beginning. So it takes many years before someone's really competent to answer all the questions that a consumer would be able to ask. Uh, so, it, you know, it, it inherently limits the, <clears throat> the pace and the growth of the industry uh, if your company has the intention of uh, operating in a, in a uh, fashion that you're uh, trying only to give out correct information. And I think I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna uh, add, uh, add to that uh, point uh, just, just to further attest to that, I'm the only Muslim person working in finance throughout uh, the province of Saskatchewan. So, 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 so take into consideration the, the stats is one out of a 1.1 1. Uh, 1 million uh, population of the province. So that will uh, give you an idea as, as to further validate uh, Stephen's uh, uh, point, I guess. You have a great opportunity, huh? <laughs> yeah, I suppose yeah. so. Go ahead. In terms of our uh, <coughs> retail experience, uh, in terms of marketing Islamic financial products to the Canadian Muslim community, uh, we have to understand that Islamic finance at a retail level is generally new. The, the first time an Islamic bank, uh, the term was coined together was the Dubai Islamic Bank back in 1975. So most of our older generation, our parents, they were never really exposed to Islamic finance. So when we started launching our Islamic mortgages, we had one office and uh, we started marketing the community. People would call in and they wouldn't understand how a, a mortgage could be Sharia compliant and how it's different from a conventional. And uh, we, we started doing seminars and having uh, customer service calls, agents uh, answering questions, but we weren't really getting the clients to sign on board. Then we changed our mechanism and we, we opened up branches in key concentration Muslim areas. We trained our branch managers to uh, walk a client through how an uh, Islamic mortgage is based on trade, which is permissible, and a conventional is based on, on interest, which is not permissible. So within that distribution and a direct communication with the client, we were able in 15 to 20 minutes convince a client that this is a Sharia compliant mortgage, this is the benefit, and a conventional is like this. So we found a direct approach being key. Now within the Muslim community, <coughs> the knowledge of eating halal meat, the knowledge of uh, avoiding riba is already uh, um, uh, within the community.